All right, folks, we're back. This time uh, we don't have 60 mile an hour winds. It's pretty crazy. So I, I know some of you thought that I was canceling because of the uh, audio. I wasn't. I, my phone flew like 15 feet away. My PC, the laptop, was literally bending in half and flexing. It was bad. It was bad. All right. This is a little bit better. I can actually concentrate a little bit. I can barely concentrate as it is, much less if I'm trying to hold down, you know, a very expensive $400 camera and $100 lens. All right. Let's see. Shannon, glad you made it back. Todd, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming back. And yes, Ed, deja vu all over again. Also want to, uh, I always forget to do this, but I want to welcome everybody that uh, probably, we probably get... You know, we usually have 30 or so on the live stream, but then we get two to 300 views at, at a minimum uh, post live stream once this is uh, posted to YouTube. So uh, definitely want to thank anybody that's uh, tuning in for that. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about um, preparedness, survival. And there again, I, I kind of have an end state. That's kind of a bigger picture when it comes to that. that we'll talk a little bit about. Ronaldo, good to see you, man. I'm going to post uh, your gun wall. I got some other ideas for what we can do to fill that blank. So stay tuned for that. Willie, good to see you. We'll give everybody a couple more minutes to, to jump in here. We got, uh, right now we got 13 folks. So make sure you say hi, uh, especially if we got any new summers here. Thank you, Jesus. What's up, baby? Uh, uh. Again, if you're just tuning in, go ahead and throw up a comment, say hello, and uh, we'll we'll kind of go on from there. Uh, Tony, good evening. How you doing, Kevin? Good to see you, man. Good to see you back. Thanks for tuning back in at the eight thirty hour. Take two. Daryl, good to see you. Where's Paul? I want to make sure that Paul is uh, okay with my hair this time. What's going on, Pete? How are you doing? Good to see you, man. <clears throat> Paul, good to see you. Is my hair okay, Paul? Are we are we good there? Hair looks a little long. I'll make sure I get that trimmed into rag for you, Pat. <laughs> yeah, so, all right. So, again, you know, I've been uh, Liberty Biberty. Liberty Biberty. I like that name. Hey, young man. Well, hello back, young person, man, woman. I would not want to assume your gender. I heard that is, uh... no, man, I'll tell you what. And, you know, the funny thing was, again, I was going out there. I was trying to find some, you know, idealistic place. There was a state park down the road. It's going to give you guys, you know, a backdrop of some desert mountains. I was hoping some birds were going to come and land on my shoulder. It's going to be a great, great live stream. And, uh, A, the the uh, state park was closed. And then I found that place. The, the wind was good. I was like, I knew there was wind was coming, but I thought we were going to be good. I sat down and uh, I literally sat down on the computer, opened it up, man, it just... <laughs> it came in hard. So it is what it is. All right. So we'll jump right into this. And again, as I was driving across here, I was getting all philosophical, think, doing a lot of thinking, thinking about, you know, what it is that Paramount does. And one of my biggest challenges, and Summer knows this, one of her biggest challenges too is, is you know, I try to stay focused on what, what it is that we're the macro, right? It's very easy as a business owner, and I'm sure anybody, we start getting focused on these little things that end up sidetracking us from our main goals. And ultimately, one of the things that I, I started to ask myself was, you know, what is it that we really do? What, what is what is Paramount's goal? What is Paramount's main product? And ultimately, where I came down to was, you know, providing training and products to some extent to where, you know, people fear less. And, and that got into, you know, what is fear? And I, I posted my Gary's definition of fear the other day, fear in my mind is the realization uh, that your lack of preparation is leading to an undesired result. And if we think about that, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what fear is. 
you know, suddenly somebody's trying to kick down your door and you're afraid because you're not ready. Uh, you're afraid because you don't have a gun or if you do have a gun or a, a means to defend yourself, uh, you're not trained, you're not ready, you're not mentally prepared, you don't have the right mindset. Uh, there's a lot that obviously goes into that. And, and we can talk about any of those things. Um, you know, just start making a list of what it is you fear. And then, you know, those are kind of like the immediate examples. But then I started thinking to myself, you know, what is it? What do I fear? And, and there's a lot of things that we obviously uh, worry about or concerned about. Um, and, and one of the biggest concerns that I've been thinking about for like the last probably six or seven months at a minimum and probably more going back to COVID is our continued ultra reliance on government for so much. Uh, and not just on government, but our complete lack of self-reliance, right? And, and then I started thinking about, hey, what is it? What is it that makes Americans Americans? And you guys can start answering that if you want to down in the comments. And, and I want this to be, I, I would really appreciate uh, your own comments down there and, and some feedback from you guys on this and, and make this more of a conversation as opposed to me talking to this uh, Cyclops thing over here. Um, <clears throat> And to me, you know, what is it to be an American is, is really a, a lot of things start flowing through my mind. You know, rugged individualism, self-reliance, uh, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, all those, all of those things. And and then I started thinking more about these things. And it comes down to, you know, to be free and to experience liberty, you have to be self-reliant. And, and we're getting we're getting less and less so. And, and I speak. I'm talking to myself as much as anything, you know, a good example of this and, and how this, and this is a, one of those slippery slopes, right? And, and a great example of this is Facebook, for instance, as a business, when we started this business in 2015, you know, you sign up to Facebook and you have this set of agreements and, you know, you stay within those agreements. And then six months later down the road, they add a little bit more and you're like, okay, well that, that's fine. You know, and again, and then a little bit more and a little bit more, and it gets to the point where, you're self-censoring and they're censoring you to a point, but now you're reliant and we are, we're reliant on Facebook and other social media platforms to uh, be able to market our business. So because of that reliance, we're less and less free. And anytime that you're reliant on anybody, you you are essentially a slave to them. And we can think about that in many different ways. And, and what I was talking about earlier, um, what I was talking about earlier is what's going on, Aaron? Good to see you, man. Open borders is is definitely a problem, Shannon. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, one of the big th things that I fear are is what is our, the next generation going to do, right? Because even in this generation, you know, um, you know, I was I was born in 1980. Um, some of you are older, some of you are younger, but even us, we are so reliant on so many different things. And so completely not independent. We are slaves to so many things that it's gotten to the point to where, you know, our, and going back to really, this kind of leads to the point of I was trying to make earlier as far as our kids. I'm concerned not only with this generation, but our next generation. You know, I don't see, when I look at people walking down the street, I don't see rugged, rugged individuals. Um, you know, I see a lot of uh, skinny pant wearing, demasculated men, this, this blurred line of male and female. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy when you look at it and, you know, at the individual level, I want everybody to do whatever they want. I, I believe in, I'm, I'm, you know, essentially a libertarian. I want people to do what they want, but at the same time, what I want for my family. And I think I, I you know, a lot of people here feel the same way is I want my sons and daughter and, and, and my wife is very independent. You know, I want all of them to be independent, whether I'm there or not. You know, it, it, I want them to grow up knowing how to do things. I want them to grow up with a with some principles and values um, and the principles and values that they're inundated with constantly is. You know, we almost don't have a fighting chance, and this is what I was talking about as well earlier, the fact that they are hit from every area, from culture, from school to with, with values and it's micro dosed and it's, it's just relentless every single day that they almost, 
we almost don't have a chance with the amount of time and and energy that we put into indoctrinating them with what we want as far as values and things like that. So, you know, to make a long story short and try to get more straight to the point and, and not take you down the, uh, the brain rabbit hole that I've been going through the last few weeks and really even for the last few months, this family skill survival course, what I'm really interested in is creating a course and it's not really even a course what i want it to be is a continued thing where it's an opportunity for people like us to get together and to share skills and to share abilities and to start thinking about what we want our kids to be what i want our kids to know and an opportunity to really have them unplug and fall in love with the outdoors giving them an alternative because right now what they're what they are being fed and what they're addicted to and what they enjoy is sitting in front of those screens. And all that screen is doing is teaching them things that we don't agree with and we know are not leading to America, you know, being good Americans. And uh, Glenn Elmers, I don't know if he's on here tonight, but Glenn Elmers talks about, and he, he has uh, several articles and he talks about uh, not only his book, but in several articles, what a real American is and how, Quite frankly, when we talk about liberals, we talk about the woke crowd, they're not real Americans. They do not represent what America was founded on. And again, it's that individual liberty. And they understand, folks, there's a very calculated and pernicious attempt to make us more and more dependent on many different areas. And it is not by accident. It's so that they can control you, to manipulate you, to manipulate our kids and we are not getting better for it. And ultimately what I want these get togethers, I don't want to call it a course is again, you know, one time every 90 days for not only for kids to get outside and families to get outside and like-minded people to join up and understand and just reinforce the fact that they're, we're not alone, right? There are a lot of people out there that want to do some of the things want to have the skills that many of you have, that want to have the skills that I have. And when it comes to preparedness and, and contingency planning and all of these things, whatever it is you fear, whether it's not being able to have food if we have some crazy food shortage or not being able to, maybe it's just simply, you know, getting in a car wreck, not being able to save your kids' lives. All of those things can be addressed or greatly mitigated with the fact with a little bit of training with a little bit of know-how and with the right equipment right but we, we got to put in the effort and doing these courses and providing this opportunity is what i want to do right and i want this to be again just a, a gathering place of people to share skills and to understand that we don't need to be so dependent on local law enforcement we don't need to be dependent so much on ems or if it came down to it, we weren't dependent on the local grocery store or we're not dependent on the government for our sustenance. Uh, we're not dependent on Facebook and social media platforms for our entertainment or marketing or anything else. So it's really it is a matter of uh, kind of building a community and, and, and giving, giving something, providing something that people are interested in and, and have a draw to come to, right? Giving them something that to them it's worth, hey, setting down or having their kids set down screens for a weekend and just get outside and learn some things. I mean, all the way from, sure, we're, you know, in that course, we're going to cover food procurement, water purification and procurement. We're going to cover fire building. We're going to cover uh, 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 wilderness medicine to some extent. Uh, Andy and I are actually putting together a course that's more specific just for that. And we actually have the course together. Uh, there's, there's two courses we have for wilderness survival, uh, for wilderness medical. One is like a, a weekend. And then there's another one that's a full week, uh, that you get a national certification on. But the point is, is that we need to start figuring out how we become more independent, more self-reliant and teach that to our kids so that they can think for themselves, because that's really what it is, is they're being indoctrinated and we don't really stand a chance unless we start putting some real, we identify the problem, start some planning into it, which again, this is what, what I'm talking about, is that's something that I fear. And there's a solution to those fears, but it takes some planning, it takes some effort, and it, it takes this. And, and I don't care. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is, because right now we're renting some space, uh, some 
training area from Peacemaker. Ultimately, it would be really nice to find someone that has, you know, a, a piece of land either, you know, somewhere in Northern Virginia or West Virginia uh, that we can use for cheap or free uh, so that we don't have to charge a lot or, again, just enough to cover costs. Uh, but that, this is not a money-making scheme, and that's not what it's about. Um, I want people to be able to live free. And, and, and again, if you're reliant, every facet of life, that you're reliant on and your kids are reliant on you are not free you're you're not you're not experiencing that individual liberty and we're 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 a frog in a kettle and it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's going to get to the point to where we either don't have the ability to live free lives or we are so reliant on things that we've given up so much freedom that even from a legal standpoint um, you know, it, it's either comply or fight. And, and I, I'm trying, I would like to see us get to a point where I would like us to not reach that point. But I will tell you, you know, as I'm watching America change in front of my eyes, I'm having a harder, harder time not seeing how this doesn't lead to some sort of conflict. Hopefully it stays political and, and doesn't become violent or anything like that. And I don't want it to. Uh, but I, you know, we're getting to a point to where we have almost two separate groups of people in the United States and their values are irreconcilable. And you see how much power they have. We see how much power they have and they've been able to exercise uh, even during COVID and they're continuing to push these things and they're using COVID and they're going to use many other situations going forward as another reason to take away individual liberty. And, you know, I was on a tangent today on Twitter and you know, a, a lady was talking about, yeah, said, yeah, you know, but that was a health and, and public safety issue. Well, tyrants always have a good reason. Um, you know, tyrants always think they're doing right in their mind. And a lot of them think they're doing right for the greater good of the people. But anytime that you're imposing on an individual liberty, you're going down the wrong path. All right. So I bloviated enough. Let's talk a little bit about let's cover some of these comments and questions and, and see where we're at on this. Uh, let's see. Let's see what Dan said. Well, being a first generation American from a family that fled communism in Cuba, America is freedom, opportunity, autonomy of choice, picking yourself up by your bootstrap. It is, but it's becoming less and less so, Dan. And, and that's really kind of my biggest concern with this. Let's see. Seriously, though, I think it's probably more like being the master of your own destiny and taking full responsibility for the good and the bad. The first thing depends on freedom. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that to some extent, Alberto. Uh, my point is, I'm not sure that we're providing them enough of a base, right? I think that the, the the base of information and the principles and things that we instill in our children right now are being so overran by and so eroded by what they're seeing every every single day, from school to media to 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 to, to social media to culture. I mean in every as aspect of life. I don't know, I, I can tell you this right now, Summer and I try really hard to teach our kids. We teach them work ethic, we make them work. Uh, you know, we make them get off the screens, we make them do uh, uh, PT every single day. Um, you know, we try to keep them active, we try to instill good values with them, good Christian values. And I can tell you right now, again, just, after a few days of, of self-reflection on that alone, we're not doing enough, right? And that's something that I want to, to fix and, and do a little bit more of because you're right. We can only give them so much. We have basically, I wouldn't even say 18 years. You know, we have probably 13 or 14 years where we have the maximum amount of influence. And then after that, we, we really don't. Um, I think 13, 14 years old is kind of where, you know, a person is is kind of set in their their value system for the most part and of course they can have you know changes but again i, I just don't feel like any of us are doing enough here's the thing I, I think we're grossly underestimating how powerful that slow drip of information and that that culture is having on them every single day what they're exposed to in school every single day um all of these things i think we, we're grossly underestimating the impact and the formative uh, 
impact that it's having on our kids. And I think that's kind of my point. It's not that you fail. It's what you do when you get up. We have lost the ability to muscle through issues and resolve those issues. Instead, we look for others to resolve. You're absolutely right. Everybody looks for a government solution. Um, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Being proactive with foreign concepts, 100%. Sounds like you're talking about being a conservationist, conserving family values through conserving the nature we're surrounded by and substance and summation. Of course, I would go on four hours. Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, that's where the, the word conservative come from, really conserving our values as Americans. Uh, I think, you know, we've almost gotten to a point to where I don't necessarily even want, I definitely don't necessarily want to identify myself as a Republican. There's a lot to what we call mainstream conservatism and conservatives that just frankly disgust me. Um, and, you know, but you're right. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, Patrick, I, I think covering situational awareness um, is really important. So, again, for many of you that, that don't know me or who I am, um, <clears throat> I actually, as a as an instructor for the Department of State, I developed their uh, situational awareness curriculum uh, for diplomatic security. I developed their surveillance detection curriculum that they still teach. Um, and situational awareness is super important. Uh, I don't know. I definitely am not going to go into depth of that today. But developing good situational awareness and and understanding. <clears throat> an attack cycle and pre-attack indicators, whether we're talking about some sort of large scale terrorist attack or just someone trying to rob you, mug you, whatever it is. There's definitely some key indicators there. And there's also a lot of deterrent factors. You know, we're looking to mitigate, deter, detect and respond or react to threats. And those are all things that uh, I definitely should do some, do a course on. I, let me think about how the best way to do that. I've also wanted to do more of that type of training with people, but Again, you know, nobody wants to, it, it's, it's one of those things that ends up being PowerPoint heavy uh, or at least classroom heavy to really talk about some of those and go through case studies to where people really grasp that. That's a really tough thing to cover in most of the mediums that we are currently teaching in. Absolutely, Shannon. They have airplanes though. You can put your mask on. Well, apparently you're not going to put a mask on. Get your butt on an airplane and come spend the weekend in the woods with us. How much property do I think? I don't think we need that much. You know, a couple acres. What we do need is some a, a water source, um, and we need some. We need a water source, and we definitely need a, you know, an area uh, enough property to where we can actually do some shelter building and things like that. So, you know, given in the right area, I think we could do a, a decent course in, in five to ten acres. Um, there's some other things that I'd like to cover that that would definitely need larger. Uh, footprint as far as the land that we would use ultimately. And here's the thing too, with these, with these family skill survival courses, what I want to do is make sure that no one is the same. Um, no course is the same in that I want to do different workshops almost every single time. So it's not a one and done type of thing. It's, it's, it's a continuing education type of situation where we're bringing more and more people on learning more and more skills. You know, maybe one course we're going to focus on land navigation. Uh, another course we might focus on, uh, leather tanning or actually food preservation, smoking food and things like that, and different abilities to preserve food naturally. Um, you know, I'd like to get more in depth and have different folks out as well as having people, people that I know that we, we currently, that are friends that can really serve as good mentors for kids and for other adults. I mean, honestly, the reality is, is that, you know, a lot of people don't even know how to change a tire. Um, you know, they, they are so reliant. I mean, they're just, they're just completely reliant. We'll just leave it at that. And, and I want to cover some of those life skills that aren't being taught. And again, you know, my kids, I've taken them out there. I've made them change a tire. I've showed them how I've, we actually had them do it. Um, but it, just like anything else, you know, a lot of these skills are, are perishable skills. And, uh, we want to make sure not only does somebody have a certain skill set, but we have enough repetitions to where there's confidence in that skill set. So the way, way six months, a year from now, two years from now, we'll still remember how to do those things. Even simple things like changing the tire um, or whatever it may, you know, 
using jumper cables, using a tow rope, all of those things, a snatch rope to get, get yourself out to use a winch. Um, you know, again, just taking the time to be very deliberate and setting yourself up to where if you're in a bad situation, you can get yourself out of it. And, and that's everything that we're going to cover in that survival course from all those different aspects that we covered, that we talked about, whether it's water and food procurement, um, medical self-aid, buddy aid, being able to extract somebody uh, from a, if you're three miles, you know, three miles into the, into the, into the bush, how are you going to get them out? You can't just leave them there. Uh, if they have a broken leg or some other serious injury, you know, how is it that we can evacuate them out of those situations? Uh, shelter building, uh, both prepared uh, and unprepared shelter building. So those are, there's a lot of stuff to cover. And it's one of those things where you can cover multiple times and hit it in many different areas. And there again, bringing kids out, bringing families out, getting them together, building relationships. That's the other thing too, right? Is, is surrounding yourself, purposely surrounding yourself with the people that are there to help you, that are there to make you stronger. And we used to get this from church, right? Churches used to be really good at this. And that has, there is less, and I, I'm not going to speak for every church, but I can tell you the churches that Summer and I have kind of sampled around our area. You know, it's like you go to church, you do your thing, and there's not a lot of social activity. And quite frankly, there's also a lot of social activity that I, I, I don't necessarily want to be a part of. So, you know, instead of complaining, I guess, about what isn't available, what we want to do is is use the resources that we have to provide something that is available, something that that people would want to go to, that that show up and are going to have a good time. They're going to learn a lot. The kids are going to have a good time. They're going to learn to experience nature and to understand that that there's much more fulfilling things than sitting on social media and scrolling through TikTok uh, and just looking, watching people do absolute nonsense. Uh, Land nav, who remembers or ever even learned to read a map? Well, I can tell you, I have. And if you know anything about the Q course, you better, that's the number one thing that gets people knocked out is the star course. Look that up. Uh, how much of the preparedness depends on physical fitness, though? I feel like if you don't have the foundation of good physical fitness, the rest of the stuff is close to useless. <clears throat> well, knowledge is power, right? So, and here's the other thing, too, is if you start getting people out of the house and showing them what they are capable of, uh, that might lead to becoming more physically fit. Um, uh, and again, this goes back to kind of what I'm saying is, is we have an entire culture that is so destructive in every single facet of life, whether it's the way that we eat, whether it's the, the lack of physical activity, all of these things. And there again, this is where it comes back to is we want to provide somebody an opportunity to start dipping their toe in those things and seeing, having a, having a positive experience so that they can start working on physical fitness. Because you're right. That's another area that, you know, independence requires physical fitness. And um, it's just one more area that we want to continue to promote. And ultimately it'd be really nice. I've even thought about, you know, coming up with having group, you know, physical fitness uh, sessions and nothing that we would even necessarily charge for. But just, you know, getting together and making sure, and it could be something where we post a workout of the day, workout of the week. There again, just providing a source of positive action and moving us back to the ideals of what America was founded on. And that is, again, being self-reliant in every possible way to include physical fitness, because you're absolutely right. Uh, teach them how to forage, fish, track, snare, hunt, and prepare their food, water, shelter, and a survival system. And, and that's what we're talking about, Derek, uh, Scott, is, and that is what we're going to be teaching in our family skills survival course. Um, we're going to start with the basics. And, you know, basically we have two days, uh, and you can only cover so much, but in this first course, in the course, so we used to run this course for NRA Outdoors. I first developed this curriculum for the NRA Outdoors. Uh, it was very successful. It was very good. But NRA Outdoors shut down their training side when they had a big uh, leadership changeover, I don't know, five years ago, something like that. And we were teaching tactical carbine. Uh, we were doing med courses through them and uh, a survival course. Uh, really, it's, it's more of an introduction to survival. And most importantly, it's not getting people out there and being miserable. It's, it's getting you outdoors 
in a comfortable, fun campground environment, pretty much glamping for the most part, but having workshops throughout the day to where we're learning exactly what you're talking about, Scott. Uh, you know, most people look, and, and before I was in the military and, and, and did some certain survival training and things like that, I was one of these guys. Most people think they can start a fire. Most of y'all have never even started a fire without the use of, you know, a ton of newspaper, some accelerants. It's not that easy, right? So especially if you're in a survival situation, now it's nice to bring those things along or at least, and we'll show you some things that you can have packed away that makes starting a fire easier. But if you don't have some of those resources, you can use natural material and get a fire going very quickly if you know how. Um, but there are some key steps to that and it can be easy, but it does take training and we're going to, we're going to cover some of those things. Fire is extremely important. And I've seen, I would say probably 85, 90% of grown men would be able to start a fire, uh, without a lot of accelerants, just like I talked about. Uh, I don't know what you mean by that, Daryl. We should start our own what? Uh, but also keep in mind, there's a huge piece of federal land very close to you. Shockey's knob. It's public. Yeah, I know, Paul. Um, I'm actually going to look into that and in, even into Sleepy Creek and some of the other stuff uh, and talk to some of the people out there to, to see what we can and can't do. The problem with that, that public land is I do want to do some shelter building and things where we'll end up, you know, taking down some small trees. And usually that's pretty frowned upon. So uh, I've, I've, Definitely have thought about some of those things. I've looked into some of those things. Um, keep the ideas coming, but yeah. Steel wool and a battery. Well, that's true, Scott. You can use a steel wool and a battery. It's uh, very easy to do, but you got to have steel wool and a battery. And I'll tell you, all that is is your tender, right? I I've seen a lot of people with steel wool and a battery, and again, a whole box of matches, and they still can't get a fire going because it's it's understanding how to build a fire is more important necessarily than than the immediate materials that you have on hand. And there again, we're going to talk some about that too um, in the course. What else we got? Exposing folks to the extreme will give them the confidence of what they know they could do. This will change folks' reliance and become self-reliant. So you're not wrong, Ronaldo. And what I, again, what I end up wanting to do is get to where we have several of these courses that are fun and easy. And then, yes, we could do some more uh, austere environment courses to where you can take those skills and you can put them to work. Um, to, and if you don't, you're going to find yourself in a lot of discomfort. I will say that that is not what we're going to do initially for sure, uh, because you're not necessarily wrong. But 99% of the people that would come and experience that instead of them becoming more self reliant, they'll be like, you know what, this stuff is not for me. And they'll never come again. And they'll never even try to do any of those types of activities again. There, there are, you know, some folks out there that would want to get thrown right into it. Uh, you know, kind of a, a naked and afraid situation. But there's very few people that will come out of there feeling like they had a positive experience and that they learned a lot. So there's some truth to that. There's no doubt about it, but it's a careful application of teaching before we test, right? That's kind of the ultimate test. We don't want to go jump right into that. We want people to have fun and learn, um, not just get thrown into it. Absolutely. Cotton balls and petroleum work together and have always worked for me. I can see it being super hard to get it far going with nothing at all. Yeah. So understanding what Tinder is and how to use that, uh, as well as kindling and how there's a, a gradual build up into that. Basically, you know, what I was trying to tell my kids, and I make them start summer, you know, summer lasts a lot of times. I make them start a fire, and a lot of times I'll make them start a fire in the fireplace without using any sort of, you know, we have some of those fire starting little logs and things like that. Um, every now and then I'm like, nope, you're going to have to start a fire without that. You get like two matches, that's it, and go get the stuff that you need. Go get the natural tender. Go get the natural um, uh the natural tender and come in there and actually start the fire like you would if you're outdoors. Um, and it, it's tough. Try to host nature type classes before there's no interest classes where all these kids. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's another thing too. And here's the thing, <clears throat> folks, I can't tell you how many times 
and and I'm just kind of uh, I'm putting on my bitching hat for a second, right? Um, people people have so many good ideas, right? Uh, I can't tell you how many times people have said, Gary, you know, if you just got to do this course, you got to do this course, if you do this course, and then we'll go through the the, the pain of putting all that stuff together, and like two people sign up. Uh, now there, there's some truth to, you got to run a few courses, you got to have it out there and you got to have them up and running. Uh, and, and, and it builds, right? There, there's, there's absolutely that part of it. A good example of this is women's shooting courses. <clears throat> Folks, you can put up all the women's courses you want and everyone says, oh, if you just had a women's course and we have found that it just doesn't work. We've given those things away for free. We've had really competent female instructors out there. It's one of those things that works in theory, but it doesn't work in reality. And a lot of these courses, just like this, I'm hoping that this isn't one of those courses where, you know, we've had a lot of people, a lot of people show interest in this. And I think right now we got six or seven signed up for this weekend, which is fine. Um, what I want to definitely do is we're going to use that opportunity in this weekend's course or next weekend's course rather to get some good marketing value, to put some content up on YouTube about it to get the ball rolling, right? So we, we're gonna take the leap. And this is something I'm very serious about, very passionate about, and I don't even care. Uh, and chances are we are gonna lose some money on this first course, and that's fine with me. Um, but this is something that, again, trying to build a counterculture and, and, and additional, um, just additional opportunities, uh, or or just alternatives to what is out there, a better alternative. And, and that's what we want to do with this. And again, something that we need to continue to uh, develop and grow. 95% uh, nine, nine, of those that attend Sierra would have left if they were able, let alone pay to embrace it. Absolutely. Um, you know, Sear is a funny thing. Uh, I went to CRC. It's, it's the... Uh, the most difficult SEER course that the military offers out at Bragg. I think they offer SEER at a couple other locations as well. But as far as uh, USASOC, um, special operations, you're going to go to, um, you're going to go SEER there at, uh, at Bragg, uh, Camp McCall. And, you know, it's the funny, it's funny, it's funny the things that break people uh, and watching people quit. And it's usually not, I went during the winter. In two weeks, in two weeks, I literally had a handful of rice, um, and it was cold, and it was miserable, and it, it wasn't a lot of, but I, that was the best course that I ever attended, because it made me realize it, and more so in the, so you go through a survival portion where you're, you're basically, people are chasing you, you're, you, you're basically being tracked down, you're trying to evade uh, and escape. And then ultimately you get captured and you get put into the RTL, the resistance training lab, which is like a, a, a mock prison. And the things that go on in there is just hilarious. I mean, I just sat around and I just, I, I actually enjoyed it. You know, these people are walking around, they're, they're role playing. Uh, they'll come up and they'll like, why are you taller than I am tall? They have this weird fake accent. And if you, and most of them are very short. And if they walk by you and you don't squat down, they'll just grab you and start smacking the crap out of you. And it's just hilarious to watch. Or, you know, they'll make you basically, not basically, they make you get naked and then lay down in a snow puddle and just roll around. They're like, really, 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 really. And it's just so surreal. And, you know, you, you, you get plenty of water for the most part, but you're freezing and you're hungry and it's just absolutely surreal. And I knew that I would never get to experience that again. And it was the most eye-opening because the things, I won't get into that, but the point is, is that people break and they break a lot easier and they turn on, on you. And that's what I realized about getting captured is that there's going to be some people that if the captors know what they're doing can be manipulated into turning against their own people a lot faster than you would ever imagine. And that was kind of what I took from that, but you're right. I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but, um, you're right. Most of them, and there's a lot that do quit and, and people that you would think never quit. And even in areas where it's like, this isn't even the hard part. Like we, we, we we're past the hard part and now you're still quitting. But again, it's, it's weird. 
Uh, during my career, I knew what I could do and challenged myself to do more and experience, learn things. I never, <coughs> you're absolutely right, Ronaldo. And, and, and I always did the same thing. And a lot of people do my concern. This goes back to this generation. I think a lot of what we're seeing as far as millennials and, and I don't even know what you call like people being born today. Uh, they're obviously not millennials generation, whatever. Um, I think they're just so used to comfort that A, what they would consider pushing themselves is laughable. And then B, I think there's just so many people that they would rather live without freedom and have comfort than, than anything else. And, and again, that's intentional. That's by design. And, and, and I'm, I'm concerned for the future of our country. Yeah, you're not getting a shotgun class. You know, I don't mind teaching a shotgun. We'll just never call it a tactical shotgun. Because if we're going to have a tactical shotgun, then we can we can do like Chris Costa and have a tactical lever gun, which is no such thing. And then we could also do a tactical single, uh, a single action revolver course too. But there's nothing wrong with learning how to use a shotgun, especially if it's all you got. You should be proficient with a shotgun. There's no doubt. But the problem I have with shotguns is, is once you start offering tactical shotgun classes, uh, people start thinking that you're saying, hey, this is a good option. And it's it's not a bad option, but it's far worse than an AR. And it's definitely not the best option by, for a lot of different reasons. All right, where are we at? This is why communicating at home is key, discussing those issues. Absolutely. It, it, is, it is critical. It's very critical. That's uh, That's good. That's good. And, and again, I think, you know, you can get to a point to where you have enough reach and, you know, we're definitely, we definitely have a lot more marketing reach than we did multiple years ago. And, and, and I, I always talk to our instructors, our instructors come up with these ideas of, Hey, we should run this course. We should run this course. Well, as you start getting more advanced in courses, right. You know, let's say for every person that you have, an impact on that you they see a video they see an ad they see whatever else you know it might be one in a, a thousand that will come to a handgun course well <clears throat> that's good now you're talking about one in 1500 that would come to a level two handgun course um and then one that will come to a level one and a level two uh and and then it just starts going further and further away from there as you start getting you know carbine is going to be less than 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 handgun handgun is definitely the most predominant courses are most are, are most popular courses and then you talk about medical now we're talking about one out of five thousand people or even ten thousand people that you're marketing to that you have that marketing reach and will actually come to a medical course because they don't see the value so part of it is getting your message out there making people understand the value of those types of things and then on top of that is expanding your reach so that even if you're as long as you're reaching fifty thousand people you're going to have ten people show up to a course no matter what. So <coughs> there is some truth to that. I think the more that we start, the more people that we reach and as our, our, our footprint grows, both on a uh, digital footprint, as well as our clientele base, you know, we can definitely start doing more of those courses because the reality is, is that I, I would probably say one out of 15,000 people um, is going to produce a woman that's going to come to a handgun course. Maybe that's, you know, 50% of all statistics are made up on the spot. But, you know, again, it's just a matter of enough reach, reaching enough people to fill those courses. And I do think they're a lot more popular in Florida. Uh, shooting in general is a lot more popular in Florida. There's no doubt about that because I think the weather and things like that. I used to take printed bush classes at the school that was in Hedgeville, is no longer there, and it was dissolved in a divorce. The woman, black guy, black rifle guy, call Camp Slappy. Yes, that is the one that they call Camp Slappy. It is definitely Camp Slappy. I'll tell you a little story about that. So, um, I always think about this and laugh. So I remember, you know, going into this this into Sear, and you always hear about how they smack you. And I was like, whatever, man. You know, I'm a tough, gonna be a Green Beret, former Army sniper. Already did a combat tour. Uh, I was a tough guy, right? And I was like, they're not going to, big deal. They slap you. They ain't going to bother me at all. 
So, you know, one of the things that you go through in SEER training is, is they talk about the code of conduct and what you are allowed to talk about and what you're not allowed to talk about. And then they also teach you some resistance training, you know, um, how to resist, you know, feign that you're hungry, you're tired, all these things. Well, I remember when I first got captured, um, I, I'm brought into this little skinny guy on a desk and he's taking down information. He's like, uh, you know, what's your social security number? And I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm just, it's, uh, you know, I'm just trying to stall. And uh, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm just thirsty. He's like, well, you, you can get something to drink in a minute. I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm just tired. I'm, I can't think right now. And uh, you know, next thing you know, he like grabs the phone and he calls somebody. And I'm like, this dude comes in. Oh, this guy's gonna slap me a little bit. This dude was probably six foot fourteen and a half, and hands bigger than my head. And that dude snatched me up out of the chair, held me against the wall, was like, wham, 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 wham smacked me i have never since or before that been hit so hard so fast i was like three six seven eight eight four 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 two two one you know i, I spit that thing out in, in a heartbeat i suddenly i was not tired or hungry or anything else but it was uh it was impressive with the amount of force i mean you know we had people lose teeth and everything else during that course so it was you know if you've ever been slapped right it, it's actually worse than a uh than a punch uh, let's see what else we got here. I have 13 with, with water. Uh, what do you mean you ran out of soy sauce? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe during lunch breaks, maybe during, during any class, a medical component in, is introduced. Yeah, Scott, uh, that's not a bad idea. The problem is, is that Honestly, half the time when we're doing lunch, uh, depending on what's going on, it is so rushed and there's so much, you know, and again, it's good that that clients don't see, you know, that part, that part of it is transparent for the most part, but you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, with every course you're, you're assessing what's going on with the clientele and the students in general. And, and, you know, there's a lot going on both in our heads and kind of behind the scenes and, and honestly, there's not a lot of actual time to do, you know, the other thing too, is a lot of times we're just scarfing down food. And next thing you know, we're while you guys, while the students are still eating, we're out there stapling and, and, and repacing targets and, and planning for the next course of fire. And again, talking about uh, internally, you know, like, Hey, you know, we need to push this guy or this girl a little bit more, or, Hey, this person needs a little bit more attention. So there's really no time for that. Um, you know, most of the time we're only doing 30 minute, 30, 45 minute lunch breaks as it is, but, Honestly, all that time is ate up, but uh, you're absolutely right. And again, some of the courses that we have, I don't know if we have, we ran a couple last year, uh, tactics and tourniquets. We need to put a few more of those on there, but we do need to, I don't know. You know, the fact of the matter is, is, is I think when people come to our courses enough, whether it's handgun or carbine, everyone comes for the gun courses. They end up hearing me preach about the med courses and how important they are enough. To, and obviously that's how we, 90% of our students that go to med courses are our gun course students. So that is kind of a, a self-feeding thing. And, and right now I, I can't think of honestly, and that's something that I've put a lot of thought and time into. I don't know that there's a better way. Um, I think it's a matter of, again, creating a larger base of folks that follow us, whether it be YouTube, whether it be social media, whether it just be people coming to courses and, and spreading things word of mouth. Well, thanks, Ronaldo. Um, I always, one thing, one thing that you guys don't see that I always need to, uh, and I don't do a very good job is, is, is really uh, giving my wife enough credit. Um, you guys have no idea. And like this weekend, I'm going to be gone. She's going to be stuck doing pretty much everything. She does the course prep. She's loading up that trailer. She's locking it up. She's doing orders every single day. She's answering emails. She does everything that, and don't get me wrong, I, I do a lot of this stuff too, but uh, without, you know, she, she she definitely works harder than I do. And she's working at something that, you know, this is my thing, right? It, it's none of it's work to me because I love doing it, whether it's, you know, I don't love shooting videos necessarily. Uh, I've gotten to where I kind of like it, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the point to where I like those things. Uh, but, and, and I enjoy the process to some extent, but when it comes to the guns, whether we're talking about building guns, 
dealing with tactical gear, teaching on the range. That's what I love to do, right? I love that. And, and everything that we, that leads to that, it's a lot of work, but it never feels like work to me. And, and, and you know, for those that people that have spent a lot of time with us or, you know, definitely summer knows, you know, we're up till two, three in the morning, um, almost, I say many nights a week. I am working on whether it's videos, whether it's course curriculum, whether it's preparing for next week, whether it's developing posts, whether it's, you know, posting dudes and dresses on social media, you know, that's folks, you know, I hate, I absolutely hate social media and, and it is absolute work to me to get on there and post every single day. But the, the moment that I stop doing that, whether it's posting about concepts, my thoughts, what's going on in, in the news or uh, talking about courses coming up or gear or whatever it is, the moment that I take a break from doing that, the, the decline in everything is, is so significant. Um, it, it got to the point where I was just really fed up with social media and summer's like, you got to start posting again. And this goes from uh, summer's like, you got to get off social media. You're on social media. I'm like, you know, I don't want to be, I hate this, but it's just what you got to do it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Tax and tourniquets was a lot of fun. Great to see actual response in a stress situation. Absolutely. I personally really love the overlanding type stuff. Is survival training something that could be done with taking part in overlanding camping trip? Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, we were going to go. There was a, a big overlanding uh, festival type thing up in PA. I forgot. I think I ended up having to go out of town. Um, it, it just fell through one way or the other. But that's definitely something we want to get locked into. I think there's a lot of overlap, both in mindset as well as interests. Um, and I would definitely like to get to a point to where we're doing like land navigation courses regularly. That's another area of absolute reliance. Folks, most of y'all, most people out there, you know, God bless you. You know, if you don't have a map, I mean, if you don't have a, a phone or a electronic GPS, you're not finding yourself out of a wet paper sack. And it's just the reality. Uh, most people don't know how to read a map. Those are all things that that we that I used to teach regularly. Um, but it's hard to fill those courses. And that's something that, there again, what, what I was talking about was if we start able to do this on a regular basis, where we're having these camping trips with a lot of workshops in between and skill development in between and mentoring in between and just hanging out with good people in between and exposing our kids and our family to other like-minded folks, to, because that's the thing, the thing that draws kids away from what we would consider, you know, American values is they're exposed to so many other things and it looks better. Uh, and, you know, even, you know, my, my parents were extremely uh, religious. I grew up in a, a very strict Pentecostal home. And trust me, I've made lots of mistakes, but some of the people that I was exposed to, previous pastors, uh, previous uh, youth leaders and things like that, people that were just good people. Uh, take take the fact, the, 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 the religious aspect out. They were good, principled people. And yeah, I think the fact that they were, they were in church and doing the right thing and living right helped that. But I've made a lot of mistakes, but I will tell you, I've also didn't make a lot of mistakes because those people were in the back of my mind. And I wanted to be able to do that in the same way. Um, whether we, and even having, you know, again, pastors that come out and talk, uh, uh, other just motivational speakers that come out and talk, people that have gone through certain things, whether it be addiction, whether it be, uh, family breakups, all those things. I would love for people to come out to these events and be able to speak to us and give us experience in areas or guidance in areas that quite frankly, isn't our subject matter expertise. And we really suck at, um, so, and it's not just about being able to start a fire and, and be able to kill an animal and be able to, you know, clean and process that animal. Uh, I want to go much deeper than that. As a combat medic in the army, you're right. Medical is key to survival, knowing what to do and when the situation pops up, to keep the mission going hundred percent. And just the fact of the matter is, is that if you're carrying a gun, you should be carrying some sort of med gear and definitely have as much or more medical training than you are carrying a gun because you're going to, you have a thousand times more chance of using that med gear in a car wreck, the number one cause of death is not gun gunshot wounds. It is traumatic injury through every day uh, from the ages of five to, I'm sorry, one to 55. So the generally healthy population, we're dying primarily, the number one cause of death is uh, traumatic injury in one form or another. You know, work accidents, car wrecks, whatever it happens to be. 
Um, and a lot of those could be prevented if there was somebody there with the right training and the right skill set. Uh, yes, yeah, let's do some four-wheel drive. I'm all about that. She is on the ball. I have not shot at New Holland Gun Club. I don't know where that's at, Scott. Shoot me an email on that and, and where you're going with that. I'd, I'd like to hear more about that. I, I do think that that's one resource that we haven't tapped into enough. There's definitely some gun clubs. Uh, there again, we already have a base of people, like-minded folks that we could be tapping into uh, from both a business, marketing, and uh, cooperative perspective uh, is definitely some gun clubs. Uh, if you guys don't know, so a lot of our instructors right now are down at, at Blackstone, uh, down at Fort Pickett, Southern Virginia. We're actually looking at, we're going to start opening up courses down there. I'm going to set them up to where we're basically kind of franchising Paramount down to the Richmond area. Um, and that is one of the areas that we're definitely going to tap into is uh, some of the gun clubs down there. I want a good lane, of course, and long so done. I forgot so much. Definitely a perishable skill. I think urban land nav would be super handy. Land nav is kind of at its easiest in the middle, open woods and such. Would be cool to learn how to do it in the city with no GPS. So, Shannon, you're not doing the right kind of land nav. If you're down in, uh, yeah, if you just have open area and you can literally see where you're going, that's one thing. But being able to actually navigate from point to point over, you know, let's say eight kilometers, five kilometers through, uh, uneven terrain through rough terrain pushing through draws uh and through vegetation uh i would do urban land nav any day of the week to actual a legitimate land nav and i'm gonna talk basic army land nav again the q course we we, take, we do what we call the star course like the minimum trek you're gonna do is eight clicks and you do like six or seven different uh you have six or seven different points that you got to hit and that is through some of the roughest you go through some of the low areas where it's, you, you, it's so thick that you couldn't even, I, I literally have fallen and I didn't ever hit the ground. Like with a 75-pound rock and all this stuff, uh, you're just so entangled in vegetation. And you got to learn to navigate either through that or around that and be able to hit those points and to do uh, uh, intersection and resection and knowing how to use your map and compass and knowing how to terrain associate uh, as well as read grids and plot grids and plot points um, is, it's a skill. And it, it's definitely, I've done a lot of urban land nav and it, it's it's not nearly as difficult, that's for sure. And it's not nearly as technical either for a lot of different reasons. Um, all right, well, first of all, I guess, let's see what you were saying, Shannon. I guess with, I guess woods with super hard obstacles would do it. The only course I've done is super lame because they're open fields with minimal walk. Yeah, so, you know, that's the, the standard land navigation that you see in the military and the Army are these, you know, you're out there. It's been used so many times. Number one, it's usually the, the points are less than a kilometer away. And it's usually a lot less than like 400 yards, 500 yards. Uh, and then the the path to those points are so worn in that you, you just walk right there. You don't even need to pull out a compass. Like, okay. Uh, this is generally my azimuth. I see this path. I'm going along it, you know, and then you get to a box that has a grid on there. You write it down. It's a joke. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't doesn't imitate reality whatsoever. So I just bought an activity back from the website a few months ago. So some, hey, Lewis, I appreciate that. M, I feel like you're a, a James Bond character. M, M Lewis. No, hey, look, we appreciate that, folks. Look, we appreciate all the business that you guys give. And I'll say, you know, there's a lot of folks on here that are, are some of our core clientele uh, that have given us a lot of business through training, have have, have constantly uh, do business with us on our website, and we really appreciate that. And I will say that, that our website, and a lot of it is thanks to Dan, by the way, who's on there as, what's your crazy, too easy. Uh, Dan is another guy that I don't give nearly enough credit to. Um, man, he has just done such a great job getting our website looking good, operating smoothly, optimizing the SEO. I mean, between that and the YouTube content that we're now creating, it is completely, you know, before it was like we get a couple orders a week uh, here and there. And again, we, we never were pushing products to begin with for the most part. Most of our sales were done on site at the trailer at a course. It's where we did probably 90% of our sales. Now that it's flipped around. Uh, we get three or four orders per day. 
uh, at a minimum. And you know, now we're doing 90% of our sales on our website in a very small percentage, uh, which those haven't gone down, but we still do a, comparatively now, we're doing a small percentage on that. So that's definitely getting us closer to our goal and building the business, building the company, and and even, even creating a lot of very loyal clients that are all the way across the country. So, um, you know, it's, it's been great to see that portion of the business grow. And that's really important because I've always understood that training, providing training is only going to get you so far, um, especially in this area. Obviously, you're pretty much going to shut down for the winter. Uh, we would like to start doing some other training events that would include whether they be indoor, like someone was saying earlier, talking about uh, situational awareness, doing some indoor clinics, maybe getting to some indoor ranges, things like that. So we're going to continue to grow that business, uh, that side of the business as well. But again, we really appreciate everybody's support. We really do. All right. So we've covered a lot on that side of it. And uh, I, again, I know a lot of this, I'm speaking to the choir in, in a lot of parts. But <clears throat> I will also say that it's one thing to believe the things that we believe, it's a whole nother thing to put those things into action. And that's and that's really, I guess, my point of this um, Free For All Friday is to try to motivate you guys. And I'm not just saying come to our course on the, the I do want you to come to our family survival course. But regardless of what we talk about, we got to quit talking about it. And we got to start doing more and putting those thoughts and principles that we talk about and we claim to want and to put in our kids and to be good examples and that's the other thing too there's lots of folks on this on this live stream that you know i want my children exposed to um you know you guys have such so many so many folks just on this live stream alone you have so much experience whether you have former military experience just life experience um and and, and i'm sure many of you have kids but Again, it goes back to have this community where, you know, the old adage of, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, again, if your kids are only exposed to you, you can only teach them so much to, to the point of, you know, kids don't listen. They, they get tired of hearing mom and dad talk. And when when they have another adult that they admire, be able to talk to them and to speak wisdom to them and into them. Um, and, and also even to the point to where, you know, it would be very nice to where my kids would have mentors that they can call when they're older, and even now, where it's like, hey, you know, I'm having a rough time. I don't want to talk to dad about this. I don't want to talk to mom about this, or or just or or just have somebody else that provides that affirmation of the things that the parents have been saying, because it's it's just not enough. And we're climbing, we're on a treadmill that is going faster than we can run when it comes to uh, the things that our kids are being exposed to, and, and we really alone we can't overcome them and we're going to lose you know god forbid you know our kids are going to turn into these hippie liberals that are that that don't value masculinity that don't value all the things that we value and and that's what i want to start doing and trying to work to change and you know, if nothing else, just get my kids. I don't care if I got to go out there, just my family. We're going to go out there, start fires, cut down trees, you know, skin some rabbits and and learn to cook on a, on a, on a campfire and just get away from the damn screens. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's crazy. I'm scared of what the next generation turns to. That's, that's really what it comes down to. <clears throat> just adds up and bring us, oh, let me, let me the, just, I'll bring steaks to cook for next weekend's class and eggs and bake for breakfast. Nice. Let's see. Willie says, I, I will say if you take your daughter to a class, she will spend money in the trailer. She does. I, I, I love it when you bring Natalie out. <clears throat> Land nav at night is the way to learn to, to waypoints. Uh, it is. Um, definitely to confirm your skill set. It's definitely not the way to start learning, but your, your point is valid. It definitely validates that you can actually follow a compass, have an actual pace that is consistent, um, and know how to shoot a proper azimuth. And, you know, uh, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, let's see. Lydia Russo, I'm going to bring friends next week to learn the process meat birds. To have friends next week to learn. Oh, okay. Awesome. 
yeah, and you know, it's stuff like that that uh, that would be nice to get people in the community just to come out not for the whole weekend, but people that have these different skill sets that are valuable to people. Uh, you know, people that are processing meat and things like that. You know, do I know how to dress a a deer and animals? Yeah, but am I good at processing them and really uh, cutting them up and know what you know meat cuts and things like that? No, you know, I'm going to cut that thing up and it's going to look all crazy and you know we're going to throw it on the fire. I'm going to eat it like a freaking caveman. But it would be nice to have a little bit more skill set, not only be able to process them, but also you know one thing that I'm really interested in, I think would be really cool to learn is you know the tanning process. Uh, whether it's brain tanning, they also have a, you can, you can smoke tan stuff and then food preservation, actually learn how to smoke food, uh, using natural resources and not, you know, your pellet smoker that we got out there somewhere. Um, you know, all those things. What else we got? Any other questions about, uh, anything else as far as long range, carbine, shooting, medical gear, equipment, life advice, relationship advice. No, I, I never. Summer's laughing right now, <laughs> at least on the inside. Yeah, you too, Todd. I'm glad you showed up, buddy. Thanks for coming back at the 8.30 mark. Appreciate that. All right, folks. Well, I think uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. If you guys got nothing else for me, look, I, I really appreciate you guys tuning in these things. Uh, I think they're important. Um, you know, I know this one was a little bit more sober and more serious than we normally have. Uh, I will say we have some really cool guests coming up. Uh, we're trying to lock down a couple different dates for some interesting folks that are coming on to the live stream that we have, that we have tentatively scheduled. So uh, continue to watch this. If Again, if you are watching this after we have recorded it, make sure you're showing up every Friday. We're going to try to do it every Friday that we can, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we'll try to make sure that we're doing this regularly. But uh We'll have, continue to, I'll continue to get better at doing these, number one. And number two, we'll continue to have really great guests on and uh, cover some really cool topics. All right. If you guys got nothing else for me, I want you guys to have a wonderful weekend. I appreciate your time. appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate your business. Make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com. Go check out our upcoming training schedule. Go check out our upcoming courses. Folks, sign up for those courses. Uh, we'd love to have you out at that family survival course. Um, we want as many people as we can on this one so that we can get some good marketing value out of it uh we'll bring some cameras out there and try to get uh probably shoot some stuff that we'll end up posting on youtube as well and again just try to maximize and capitalize on, on that time but i think it's gonna be i don't think i know it's gonna be a really great time so if you're in the area and you can make it bring your family we'd love to have you out um what else oh folks go to that back to blue throw five dollars ten dollars even if you're already given a little bit goes a long way uh, we want to really help that family, and I'm, I'm pretty determined to get to 10000 even for the sell summer's car. So if you don't want summer walking, go donate to that, folks. All right, folks, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next time. And uh, you guys have my email. If you have any questions, comments, scratch complaints, send it there. Uh, yeah, we appreciate everything you guys do for us. So until next time, stay armed, stay ready, and we'll talk to you soon.